guys welcome back to my channel Simone here so today I'm going to be doing my March wrap up and this month has been a bit of a weird one I've had lots of five star reads and lots of one and two star reads and then towards the end of the month I've just stopped reading really so I need to get back onto that but anyway I've read 13 books this month which I think is pretty good I'm doing okay and I thought I'd talk to you about them today so let's go the first book I read this month was The Girl Who Played With Fire by Stieg Larsson and this is the second book in the Millennium Trilogy. Um, the first one is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which I read maybe two years ago. Um, and I love this book. I gave this a five star. It was amazing. This follows the main character, or one of the main characters from the previous um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, um, Lisbeth Salander, who is a, she is an investigator, but she's also a hacker. So she hacks into people's computers. She's very, very tech savvy. She knows what she's doing. And in this one, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it will spoil the first one, but um, something happens and she is accused of a crime and she then has to use her kind of technical while. So she has to try and um, sort of prove herself innocent but she's not that interested in proving herself innocent. What she's more interested in is finding out who actually did it so that she can kind of get her own back I suppose. Um, and there's lots of things in this that are really interesting. It, if you've seen the first film, especially the Swedish version, I can't really remember the English version, but there are certain things which are never explained in the film, um, which are explained in the second book. And I think the same with the books as well. If you read the first book, um, there are things that you kind of, that you don't really understand about her that you certainly do in the second one. Um, it really goes into more detail. I loved this one. I'm really glad I read it. I think it did not suffer from the second book syndrome, which I think a lot of books in series do. And I'm really excited to read the finale. Um, I think Steve Larson was amazing, although I'm pretty sure he's dead now, so that's quite sad. But anyway, I loved this one and I, I'm very much looking forward to reading the third one. The second book I read this month was The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton, which was a book that I got out of the library. I think I must have like said I wanted to read it on my Goodreads to like to read list um, a while ago. Um, and I just never, I don't really remember reading the synopsis and liking it and then clicking on the fact that I wanted to read it but I sort of wanted to pick a random one off of this list um, and then I got it from the library and when I did um, I think I did a video in fact I'm pretty sure it was in my library hall so I'll link that below um, but I know that I talked about the fact that it was um, from three different time periods and how excited I was to be reading World War One book. Now this is set um, around World War One but it has nothing about World War One in it. Um, it's Basically there are three time periods, it's set in 1914, hence just before the First World War, um, where a little girl is essentially found stowed on a ship and um, she's taken in by a family that find her and she doesn't remember anything about her previous life, she doesn't know why she's there and um, they kind of bring her up as their own. Then in the second time period, I think it's 1974, um, and she is a um, elderly lady who is now trying to kind of work out the, I guess she's trying to find out like her birth parents and kind of where she came from and what actually happened. And then it's set, then the last part is set in 2004 and it follows Cassandra, her granddaughter, who has just been, uh, the, the lady has just passed away and she is basically trying to she's been given a house in England, now they live in Australia, but she's been given a house in England as part of her grandma's will and she's trying to now go back there and find out the mysteries and figure out what's going on. The Forgotten Garden is at this cottage basically. And there was so much stuff in this, there was so many like interesting things that happened. I couldn't even begin to try and explain it, but it was really, really interesting. I think that if you're a big historical fiction fan, you'll really, really like this because it was just really, really interesting. And um, yeah, I would definitely recommend. It's not something I probably would have picked myself, um, like initially, um, but actually reading it, I'm really glad I did. And it's quite a long book, but it went really quickly. So definitely one I'd recommend. The third book I read this month was the first of the disappointing ones of the month. And unfortunately there was quite a few of those this month. Um, and that is Private Paris by James Patterson and Mark Sullivan. I gave this a two star. This is actually the 10th book in the Private series. And I feel like it's gone a bit too far now. I've read all of them. And um, probably from number one to like number maybe six or seven, I really, really liked them. They weren't particularly distinguishable from each other, but I do think they were really good. Um, but now I feel like they're just getting a bit silly. And I'm actually going to have to quickly read the back of this to remember what it was about, because I can't remember already. Let me remember. Oh yeah, this was like a... 
it was set in France obviously and it's private Paris but the guy who owns private the guy who owns the private uh, business um, the, it's a detective agency I suppose private private investigation agency that's it um, he owns that he's gone to visit the new um, agency I guess in, in Paris and while he's there they, these riots and things start happening and um, a lot of people are being anti a lot of people are being anti Islam and anti-Muslim I guess and there's a real like divide between the people and so they're trying to figure out what's going on people are being murdered in the name of um, I think it's AC AB16 that's it and it was A something <laughs> Um, and yeah basically um, it's kind of that and then alongside of that there's another kind of subplot about a rich man's granddaughter um, yeah who is on the run from a drug dealer and yeah so that's kind of another side side note um, yeah really really interesting but it did not work for me this was there was just too much in it the things in it I didn't really care about they didn't they didn't and I didn't like the Paris um, agency like stuff like normally in the others the characters are really interesting so i like it but this just wasn't for me and um i don't know if i'm going to read anymore I, I say that but i probably will but i just i'm not going to expect anything so i don't think i'm going to enjoy any more of them because you know he's he's drawn this out a bit now i think but this one is not one i would recommend next up was the first book in my stand up to the tbr part two um that i read this month and i will link the video um, of books 11 to 20 in the description box below and probably up here somewhere I forget I think it's here like here maybe I don't know either way one way um I will link it um I if you don't know what my stand up to the TBR is basically I am reading all the books that I've had on my Goodreads to read shelf for ages <laughs> and this one was one of those of this month and um I really didn't like it I gave it a two star I'm not particularly happy that it made me read it but hey I've read it now I guess um this one was splintered by A.G. Howard and it's the first book in I think a trilogy I'm not 100% sure um but it is I think it's yeah it's an Alice in Wonderland retelling but in saying it's a retelling there's a lot of actual like genuine rep like mentions of Alice in Wonderland so it's not really a retelling as such it's more like a sequel but not a sequel I don't know how to explain this to you it's basically like a sequel because it's talking about what happened before when Alice went to Wonderland and then they are now going back there I guess so I really just didn't like this there was the characters in it were so unlikable I wanted to punch every one of them in the face the fact that Alice was meant to be the grandmother and like her great great grandchild or something was called Alyssa that annoyed me and her mum was called Alicia and I'm like could you be a bit more like especially when none of them have like any love left for the fact that Alice went to Wonderland like ugh, just pull away from it for goodness sake name your kid Frankie or something I don't know just no <laughs> and the, the love interest both of them were yeah I hated them all and um there was nothing redeeming about this book unfortunately and the story was a bit irritating and no there was nothing about this I liked and quite frankly I'm not going to continue reading the series but thanks Stand Up To The TBR for making me read a pile of rubbish. However, the Stand Up To The TBR actually managed to redeem itself in the next book because I gave it a four star. I loved it. I thought it was really, really interesting and I'm really glad I read it. And it is Miss Peregrine's Home For Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Um, and this really interests me. I especially love the fact that I read this copy because I'm pretty sure I own a copy of this on... Um, kindle on my kindle um but in the kindle it doesn't have the pictures and i'm really glad i read this with the pictures because i don't think i'd have got it the same thing from it if that makes sense in this one um throughout this book right, let me find one you have these pictures like old pictures that are actual pictures that ransom riggs found in fact in the back he's given like a list of credits for the the pictures and basically he's written a book I think for, as far as I know he's written a book around these pictures and he's kind of tried to incorporate them now this is about a boy named Jacob who has gone to this little island in order to try to find out about his grandfather's past because all he knows about his grandfather um who has now passed away is that um he told him lots of stories about when he was younger and living in an orphanage on this island and um, all these strange things and strange people that he was surrounded by now Jacob was kind of taking this to be kind of like a 
not a joke but sort of an embellishment but he goes to this place and he finds these peculiar children who all have these peculiar powers um there's one who can float like um they have to give her like these heavy shoes to wear so she doesn't fly around the ceiling there's one who is invisible there's lots of different ones but basically um yeah using these pictures he's made this story and it's about them trying to figure out what's going on i loved this like it was genuinely one of those books that i was a bit like probably not for me it's not the type of book i would normally read um i'm not really into kind of like magical creatures and things but this was so fascinating um each of the characters was really interesting and i actually liked them unlike the last one i read that i did not like them as i mentioned before um and um yeah i just i really wanted the characters in this to win you know i wanted them to be happy which is always a nice thing to do when you read a book so yeah really liked this one glad i read it and gave it a four star the next book that i read was a book that in the library hall i said i can't imagine i'm gonna hate this book this is gonna be amazing i'm going to love it and, and i absolutely hated it i gave this a two star and i i hate myself kind of for doing so because i love Roald Dahl Roald Dahl is my childhood favourite. I loved Matilda and I loved BF, the BFG and there are so many books of his that I loved and apparently I missed the fact that this book is a load of rubbish. Um, this is James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. There are lots of things I could say about this but I don't want to be offensive so I will just say that um, I remembered the bit about James and the Giant Peach when he started moving the giant peach to places and there were cloud monsters and rainbows shooting at them and i don't remember that happening when i was a kid i don't ever remember reading about cloud monsters i don't like that's just a thing that i came up with i don't know i didn't like this book because it was ridiculous i would have quite happily sat and talked to mr centipede and mr L mrs ladybug and whatever else and oh the spider all them they were great and the earthworm and the centipede that was awesome i didn't need them to leave where they were that was not awesome that was rubbish and oh it was just ridiculous why why like it wasn't already unbelievable enough that you had a giant peach with a load of creepy spiders and stuff in it that were like i don't know um, I've got nothing else to say. That's it. I'm done. Okay, so the next book, I'm, I'm talking about The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Now, I love this book, don't get me wrong, I gave this a five star, but the most difficult part about this is talking about it because I don't want to say something or like use a word that is potentially offensive. So I started reading this book and I told my boyfriend and I told my dad how much I didn't like it. It was, I think I'd read like 50 pages by this point and I was like, I don't understand what people think, like, why are they liking this? If you don't know what The Hate You Give is about, I'll just quickly mention before I get into it, that it's basically, um, it f is based on the Black Lives Matter movement and it follows a young girl named Star who is in the car with her best friend, when uh, Khalil, when he gets shot by a white policeman and Star and Khalil are both black. And um, it is then a big thing because she's like the only person who has witnessed it, but she lives kind of two lives she lives the life of um with her kind of black family and friends and they all live on this sort of estate and um they're not particularly well off in certain situations and then she but she also goes to a very posh privileged um school in a white neighborhood uh where she's one of like two or three black children in her school and she when she goes to this school she completely changes her the way she speaks and the things she says and the things she does like she she has a completely different she's a completely different person is what she said in fact in this she alludes to the fact that she is star a, one type of star where she lives and one type of star where she goes to school um she has a white boyfriend and um so she has this conflict anyway and then obviously this happens and I, it, the first 50 pages um up until i think the actual um murder happens were the language in it i was what i found difficult to read because i guess it's not the normal language that i read now i found it to be very um stylized language like it is um very colloquial and it's very 
specific um, and so when I was reading it I was finding it quite difficult to kind of follow some of it and some of the language it's just not language that I've ever come across or I've ever read myself um, or like ever ever spoken or had spoken to me I guess um, and so I struggled with the first 50 pages however I decided to keep going because I know that loads of people love this book and it is one of their like favourite books of all time I kind of started to understand it a bit more and it started to make sense the way it was written and um, I actually really enjoyed the fact that it was written differently based on who she was around so the actual writing of the story was different based on whether Star was with her friends from school or whether she was with her family when she was with her family it was written in this colloquial way and I think Angie Thomas did a really good really good job of that um, and then when she went to school it was written in a completely different way and if I'm being honest and this probably is coming from a place of privilege the white voice that she had when she was with her school friends was much easier for me to read but then I realised when I was reading that that that's kind of the point I think it's showing the difference between who she was at school and who she was at home and so realising that and then being able to sort of see that that was the way it was in the language made sense to me and then actually then the message came across to me more and it completely made sense and I was reading this like gritting my teeth because it was so close to home in some ways like because of how much this is kind of prevalently like in today's society like I feel like these situations unfortunately are happening more and more and certain things were happening and I was just thinking how can she possibly make a good decision out of this there are so many like things that are against her and her family and the other people like it didn't make sense and there was one particular incident in this where one of her friends, um, I, I won't go into too much detail, I don't want to spoil it, but one of her friends is particularly racist and, but has never been racist to her before in terms of, um, like, actively because I guess she sees her as a different per different person, should I say. But I think that that I struggled with so hard, like, so much because it, reading it was very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. And, um, yeah, anyway, I think I've talked about this for a good, like, five minutes. <laughs> Um, either way, this was definitely a five star read for me. I'm so glad I read it. I'm glad I persevered even though I found it difficult to read at times um, because I don't think this book is supposed to be one that you enjoy as such. Like it's not meant to be a book that is, you know, exciting and kind of like um, enjoyable I guess. Like it's meant to be a hard hitting book that makes you think and makes you kind of change the way you you perceive things I suppose so anyway five star read for me I'm glad I read it I'm glad that people made me read it and yeah that's all I'm gonna say now because I think I've overstayed my comments on this one so the next book I read will not be a surprise and I'm not going to talk about this forever because I've talked about this multiple times on this channel before is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte this as you probably all know is my favorite book well my definitely my favorite classic of all time I don't know if I can say my favorite book but I love this book. I listened to an audiobook. Now, I was a bit nervous because I think I mentioned, I don't remember when I read it, but I read Pride and Prejudice relatively recently um, on audiobook and I knocked a star off because when I read it on audiobook I couldn't skip past the boring bits. And um, this doesn't have any boring bits. There are a couple of bits where she talks like quite a lot about certain things but I still didn't find myself being bored and Jane Eyre's just my favourite human even though she's not a real person favorite character it's probably more like what I should say she's amazing I loved her I loved it and her and Mr Rochester oh, I just love them right this book is binge by Tyler Oakley um this if you don't know who Tyler Oakley is I will link his channel below so you can go and check him out I love his YouTube channel this is the thing um I didn't like this book at all I gave this a two star I really just I was disappointed with this book because I've watched a lot of Tyler's videos and like I say I love his videos I think he's very well spoken he's very informative he has a lot of sway and a lot of importance and kind of he brings a lot of awareness to LGBT issues yeah so I was really excited to read his book I bought this quite a while ago and I'm only just recently got to it obviously and I just found it to be really crude like I like I'm I have a quite a rude sense of humor anyway so I kind of expect it that sort of thing to be up my street anyway because I just find it really funny but this was like beyond even that I don't know I've never read a book by a youtuber who has taught maybe it's because on youtube he's very like pg because you kind of have to be in order to have a successful channel that you can monetize 
um but quite frankly this book uh this is like 18 plus i would suggest because there's lots of comments about certain things which i can't talk about on this channel because that, you know not that i'm monetized but i'll get in trouble i'm sure somehow um it was just a bit much for me that's all i did enjoy some of the stories though like some of the things that he talked about um to do with making his youtube channel and how he got started and just generally his life and things but there was like i think chapter two was about poo yeah not sure how i feel about that anyway this one was a two star for me um i'm kind of glad i read it though because at least i know <laughs> um yeah the next book was the most disappointing book of the month for me and that was what i was really excited about it was actually on my stand up to the tbr as well this one was ghost set a watchman by harper lee which is the second or the sequel to um to kill a mockingbird and i really liked to kill a mockingbird in fact i'm pretty sure i gave it five stars when i read it last year it's one of my favorite books that i've read i was really glad i'd read it then i got this one and i i didn't finish this book completely i read the majority of it and i just was like nothing is happening there is no storyline atticus finch who um was one of the basically in to kill a mockingbird there is about two children gem and scout um, whose father Atticus Finch is um, defending as a, as a lawyer he's defending a black man accused of murdering two white guys who raped the black guy's daughter yeah that's right um, and um, in that I felt like Atticus Finch was really strong he really stood up for himself um, he didn't care what the society had to say he didn't care what the community had to say about him defending a black man they were just he was just wanting to do the right thing and it was really really amazing and in this Atticus Finch is like a blob of meringue sat on the sofa slowly going off like he I realise he's older and he wasn't very well but come on like surely you'd have some of your old like personality still there somewhere he was just boring she I didn't care what Jem wanted anymore Ugh no and then right at the beginning like just for like a couple of pages in they said at some point that one of the main characters from the first one i won't say who has died but they just went oh yeah they died and then carried on like what <laughs> where did that come from i don't understand i really did not like this book and i gave it a one star unfortunately the next book i read was my first graphic novel and this was v for vendetta by alan moore and i got a lot of uh i say a lot there's a guy I used to go to school with a long time ago who um, wasn't very happy with me for not liking this this graphic novel. Um, I gave this two stars. I enjoyed the fact that it was a graphic novel. So for me, I think it's just made me realise that I actually do like graphic novels and I would like to read more in the future. The story for Viva Vendetta for me was not great. <laughs> I felt like there was just three books within a book, if this makes sense. Like there's three, they call them volumes, I think, in graphic novels and the middle one seemed to be a massive filler for me i didn't feel like it did anything i could probably have skipped it and i'd have been fine um it basically follows a man who is trying to bring down this society which essentially makes you do things and think things and it's like a totalitarian government i suppose um they have this like voice that talks over everything that's called um fate uh is it called the fate yeah i think it's called the fate i can't remember um i don't know i like i've seen the film for v for vendetta and i didn't love it but it was better i think than the graphic novel another thing i got told off for because that's apparently not a good thing to think um eh, it was just the way it was i don't know i didn't enjoy this graphic novel i felt like there was lots of things happening and none of them seemed to really go together very well and i just think natalie portman was better I read The Rosie Project by, who are you by? Graham Simpson. And this is the first book in the Don Tillman series. I don't know how many are in this. Apparently neither does the book. So that's a little bit awkward. Okay, I read the first half of this and hated it. I then read the second half and it was alright. I gave this a three star overall. Um, this follows a man who was very unlikable that I don't enjoy at all, called Don Tillman who is um a bit strange he's a geneticist who's trying to find a wife he does this thing called the wife project where he essentially writes a survey and these women have to write the answers and if they don't get 100 percent, they don't get a second date um he's a bit of an egomaniac i think he thinks that he's better than he is 
um, he annoys me quite a lot and Rosie comes along, she's the opposite of everything he's ever wanted, strangely enough they fall in love, the end of the story. Um, yeah, he is annoying, she was quite funny, she made up for the fact that he was annoying, she made him slightly more likeable and this is the opposite of one of those books where the guy comes in and saves the day. This was like the girl comes in and goes, I don't care what you want me to save, I'm not saving it. I'm going to go ahead with it anyway. And yeah, don't ask me why there's a picture of a lobster on the front. I couldn't possibly tell you. I don't know that I'll continue with this. It says on here, a laugh out loud debut. I didn't think I laughed once, so that's a load of rubbish. And um, yeah, didn't like this very much at all. Then the last book that I finished this month was It's Not Summer Without You by Jenny Han, which is the second book in the Summer Trilogy, the first one being The Summer I Turned Pretty. I've talked about that book a lot on this channel because I had problems with the idea of puberty making you pretty. However, this book completely went away from that. Um, they're obviously older in this and this book was more about grief and getting over the death of someone you love. Um, from the first book, again I won't go into too much because I don't want to spoil it, but in the first book there is a main character who passes away in the second book, or they've already passed away um, at the beginning of the second book, and it is the rest of them coming to terms with this. Now I found this to be so humbling because I, unfortunately, um, have experienced the death of a loved one quite recently. Um, and so it's one of those things where you can definitely relate to what some what's happening in the book I think um, and it wasn't as frivolous and kind of lovesick as the first book the first book was quite like um, puppy love fluffy and romancy and but this one wasn't that at all and I really liked this one um, I still don't enjoy the fact that she is in a love triangle with two brothers that is not a thing that I'm going to enjoy however I did enjoy this and um, I gave it a three star. So now I've got a special surprise for you. Are you ready? There is a special guest here who has actually finished a book and would like to talk about that book in this video. So I'm going to let them. So are you ready? Three, two, one. Hey guys, it's me, AJ. I've finished this one, Second Born by my Amy A. Bartol. Couldn't remember the name for a second then. Um, I can't hold the book up, so if you want to put a picture up, that's all cool. Um, so, quick synopsis, this book is a future soldier, sort of semi-dystopian slash utopian kind of scenario. They, short story, uh, cause it, it is quite a fairly long book for me. I don't, you people are really good at reading books, I'm not that good. 294 pages long. It starts off in a uh, in this fantastic city made in the style of swords, everything sword shaped. And it follows the story of some essentially a princess in this sort of environment where on her 18th birthday she's given up by her hating mother to the army, in effect. Uh, they recruit her so they can fight on the front lines and they just want to get rid of her. She's in the way. It's a Princess Diana situation. <laughs> can I make that reference? You can make I that reference. I think I just did. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so they're trying to bump her off and everything else, and it doesn't work. She finds unlikely connections, unlikely friends, and she becomes more important than anyone else can really anticipate from the outset. I, the first, my first impression of the book is, and I know Simi doesn't really like it that much, I go to the back of the book almost immediately, and the first thing I noticed was it has an index of phrases, a glossary. And I'm thinking, if it... <laughs> It's like a dictionary for the rest of the book, and that was my first warning sign. There's language in here and terminology that uh, can be a bit confusing. Um, ranks and titles and things like that that I found myself having to constantly look for definitions for grammar. Um, but it didn't really break the immersion in any way. My biggest pet peeve is left on a cliffhanger. It was it, This book could easily have been 500 pages long, and do a good job because it really I was hating this book it was a, it's a slow burn there's so much character development but it's so fractured at the beginning things just seem to happen because they have to happen um, but nevertheless it's it does pick up about maybe a hundred pages from no about 50 pages from the end or so because it's only a 300 page book um, about 50 pages from the end it does pick up and interesting things do happen so if you're looking for a a reasonably strong female lead in a book then Pick it up. Why not? It's it's alright. It's okay. I give it a 
five what I gave it? Four star? I three star. I didn't give it three star. I gave it a three star, but very few things compare to... What's the one I gave five? The Reapers and the Angels. Yeah. We, I, Which I've talked about on this channel, but I'll link it below. I need an assistant when I do this kind of yeah. thing, so <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, so yeah, it's... Yeah, it's a, it's a good hearty book to pick up and have over a cup of tea or coffee or crumpets or something, so it's okay. That's all for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and say hello to my special guest who I will leave his links in the description below because I'm sure he'd love you to go check out his channel. And um, I'll see you on the flip side. Bye guys!